Hello and welcome to Simple in VR and AR. We'll be looking at how you can use Simple in virtual and augmented realities. My name is Joachim Tesch and I work as a software engineer at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems with a focus on real-time graphics, including virtual and augmented reality. Here are the main topics which will be covered in this presentation. We'll start with a quick look at modern virtual reality and augmented reality systems. The two key components here is the display hardware and the head tracking system. In combination, they create, in the case of VR, the illusion of being present in a virtual environment. In the case of AR, they help bringing virtual objects into the physical space of the user. Next, we'll have a look at how VR and AR environments can benefit from using articulated body models. The section on performance considerations shows us how important it is to have a body model which is able to render out fast and in a consistent time frame. Finally, we'll be looking at four examples. Three examples for virtual reality, where we'll look at Blender and VR, the virtual calipher project, animated self avatars. And we finish off with a look at augmented reality, where we'll be using the simple model on the Microsoft HoloLens 2 hardware. Let's jump into a time machine and travel back to the year 1861, where we see the ancestor of today's VR devices, the stereoscope. It presents different images to the left and right eye, which makes us perceive depth and creates the illusion of looking into a three-dimensional scene. If we replace now these static photographs with real-time computer-generated images and take into account the head pose of the user, we have a modern VR system. In 1863, we start to see large audiences being fascinated by the Pepper's Ghost illusion. A large glass screen at an angle catches a reflection of a bright lit actor. From the viewpoint of the audience, the actor appears to be on stage. By controlling the strength of illumination at the bottom, the actor could seamless fade in and out of the real world. This concept of using a semi-transparent mirror is used by many optical see-through augmented reality systems. Let's take a look at VR display hardware and how it has improved in the last 10 years. 10 years ago, the head-mounted displays used in research were very expensive. They had a very limited diagonal field of view of about 50 degrees and a resolution of 1280 by 1024. On top of that, since most of them were developed originally for US military projects, they were very heavy and uncomfortable. The ever-increasing mobile phone market leads to high-quality micro-displays at consumer prices. In 2013, Oculus launches their first development kit to Kickstarter backers at a resolution of 640 by 800 per eye that's finally an affordable device with a large field of view. The pin cushion distortions introduced by the cheap plastic lenses are compensated by outputting a barrel distorted image through GPU shaders at almost no extra cost. While initially all VR systems used to be connected with a cable to a high-end PC, Oculus has started to release tetherless standalone VR systems like the Oculus Quest. There are now many consumer-grade VR devices to choose from, and the resolution has gone up to 2160 by 2160 per eye in HP Reverb's G2. If we look at augmented reality display hardware, we can differentiate between optical see-through systems like the Microsoft HoloLens 2 and video-based see-through systems like the Vario XR3. In the area of tracking, we need to be able to determine the head pose with six degrees of freedom, the position and the orientation in real time to be able to set the image rendering camera pose. To avoid strobing, the tracking frequency should be at least the display frequency. These have gone from 60 Hz, now up to 120 Hz in modern VR systems. Modern external optical tracking systems are able to track at these frequencies. 
Inertial measurement units are a great choice for tracking users' head rotation, and they can run at a thousand hertz. One of the big differences between a good and bad VR system is the motion to photon latency. It should ideally be less than 20 milliseconds. To achieve this goal, a good tracking prediction based on the IMU data is a critical factor here. High latency increases the chance of experiencing VR sickness. The symptoms here are unpleasant, similar to motion sickness. By attaching small infrared reflective markers in a rigid constellation on the head-mounted display, we're able to track the head pose of the user in a large walking space. Many external cameras with infrared filters are capturing the location of these markers and are able to reconstruct the six degree of freedom head pose in real time. Due to noise and limited capture frequencies, it's hard to get smooth rotations at low latency with this solution. An additional challenge is that the tracking software is very often running on a different computer system than the rendering software. Therefore, data needs to be transmitted between the tracking system and the rendering system, which will increase the end-to-end -end latency. All modern VR systems use now sensor fusion with inertial sensor data, which combines the strength of optical tracking with the strength of inertial measurement units. We see three main approaches here. The first one is using a traditional external optical tracking system and fuses the data with an IMU embedded in the head-mounted display. A different approach is the Steam VR Lighthouse system by Valve. A fixed constellation of photodiodes on the head-mounted display is able to determine the position in space, which is then fused with the sensor data from the onboard IMU. In inside-out optical tracking, multiple cameras are attached to the head-mounted display. With the use of modern computer vision methods and the onboard IMU, we are now able to reconstruct the head pose of the user without the use of any external camera reference data. It is used in the Microsoft HoloLens augmented reality displays, as well as VR headsets like the Oculus Quest 2. Furthermore, it's possible to track the user's hands without the need of tracked handheld controllers. Let's have a look now at an application area which would benefit from having personalized body models in VR. This is the Cable Robot Simulator, a motion platform with a very large working space developed at the Max Planck Institute for Biological Cybernetics. If we equip the user with a VR headset and provide real-time graphics, which is synchronized to the simulation state and the head pose, we have the basic components for building flight or driving simulation systems. In the driving simulation, we'd like to see the body of the driver holding the steering wheel. In flight simulation, we'd like to see the arm interacting with a flight stick and the onboard cockpit controls. While augmented reality displays let you see your own body, it becomes necessary in virtual reality displays to render a virtual representation of your body. It needs to follow the movements of your own body, and we call this self-avatar. In collaborative multi-user environments, body models provide an important component for both VR and AR systems. They let you see the other participants in the same space. Current commercial offerings tend to stylize the avatars and often only render the upper body part. We hope to see personalized and realistic full body models adopted into these environments. In combination with a fast and robust solution for real-time full body tracking, this can take user presence to the next level in collaborative multi-user environments for VR and AR. In order to properly use body models in VR AR systems, you need to have a VR head-mounted display with a large field of view. For showing self-avatars, it's particularly important to have a very large vertical field of view that you see as much as possible of your own virtual body when you look down. Since a lot of VR headsets still have a limited vertical field of view, a typical workaround for experiments is to introduce virtual mirrors where you're not looking down at your body, but you're looking straight ahead at your body reflected in a virtual mirror. To properly observe facial emotions, it's important to have a headset 
to the high enough angular resolution. Since this is a function of field of view and display resolution, a larger field of view means that a higher display resolution is needed to maintain the same angular resolution. The human body model should not allocate too many CPU and GPU resources because you have limited CPU GPU resources available on mobile VR AR systems. The body model should leave enough CPU GPU resources available to also render a 3D environment where you want to put the body in. Finally, remember that any GPU headroom can be utilized to supersample the output to further reduce aliasing artifacts. Let's look at the performance of the Simple X body model. We're testing the model in Unity on the NVIDIA RTX 3090. The bottom left image shows the model without any active blend shapes. We're able to render it in 0.3 milliseconds, which makes it suitable for both desktop and VR systems. In the middle image, we activate all 10 shape parameters and we're still very fast and therefore able to change the shape at runtime on both mobile and desktop VR. The bottom right image shows all band shapes being active, shape, expression, and all corrective pose shapes. It takes now 2.1 milliseconds to render the model, which is still acceptable on desktop systems, but most likely will lead to problems on mobile systems like Quest 2 or HoloLens 2. Since blend shapes with a weight of zero are ignored and have no negative performance impact, you can choose on which joints you want to apply the corrective pose shapes to save performance. Since the model is represented in Unity as a rigged skeletal mesh, there are no additional latencies and you can drive it in real time through a body motion capture system. Let's look now at some examples how you can use Simple in VR. We'll start off with Blender, since this is one of the easiest ways now to see the simple model in VR. Since Blender 2.83, the OpenXR standard is officially supported. This lets you use a wide range of VR hardware in Blender, including Steam VR devices like the Valve Index and HTC Vive, the Oculus devices like Oculus Quest 2 via Oculus Link cable, and also the Windows Mixed Reality family of devices. VR functionality can be activated by enabling the VR Scene Inspector add-on, which comes bundled by default in Blender. Further information is available in the official Blender documentation. This is the Blender 3D software. We're positioning now two post Simple X bodies in the scene. The Simple X for Blender add-on was previously used to apply two sample full body poses from the Agora dataset. Let's use this add-on now to apply a female body texture to the selected model. We're now ready to start the R mode. The Blender viewport camera is now locked to the work position of the VR headset, and we can observe real-time updates of the position and orientation of the VR headset directly in the editor. Here we finally see the view from the perspective of the user as he slowly, physically walks around through the 3D environment. Inspecting a 3D model in a 3D environment no longer requires a 2D mouse. Instead, we can naturally walk around the object of interest and observe it from different viewpoints. The Virtual Caliper project presented at IEEE VR 2019 aims at facilitating the creation of personalized avatars in virtual reality systems. This is achieved by rapidly generating metrically accurate simple avatars based on measurements taken by the user itself. We use the HTC Vive with its Steam VR Lighthouse tracking system to track not only the head pose, but also the position of the handheld controllers. These are used to measure height above ground and also distances like arm span and hip width. Together with weight measurement, we are able now to change the body shape at runtime in Unity. Since no additional data processing is needed, it's a very useful solution for VR experiments. This setup has no dependency on expensive tracking and body scanning hardware and can be run outside of the research lab space. 
Here's an example of a follow-up study which we conducted with a virtual calendar system. It's a VR adjustment task for weight and body measurements, which was conducted with 36 participants. The view was recorded from the viewpoint of the subject, just like you would see it in the VR display. Please note that the actual vertical field of view in the headset is higher than what you see in the video here. We're able to change the measurement parameters in real time using a 3D user interface and see the changes immediately reflected on the simple body model. Positional noise of the virtual laser pointer is reduced by applying a 1 euro filter on the hand tracking data. In this example, you see how we use the simple model to create a real time animated self avatar. We're tracking six body locations with a consumer grade Steam VR tracking system. Head pose is provided by the head mounted display. The two handheld Vive controllers provide hand poses. Pelvis and the two feet are tracked using the Vive trackers. This data is then fed into a commercial full body IK server, which generates the resulting body pose in real time, which is then applied in Unity on the skeletal rig of the simple model. In our final example, we're looking now how you can use the simple body model in augmented reality devices like the HoloLens 2. We're placing two simple body models in our department lecture room here in Tübingen. We then change in real time the body pose of the meshes using HoloLens 2 hand tracking. This prototype is written in the Unity game engine. As the real time full body IK solver, we're using the Ultimate IK Solver from Sebastian Starke, which is available on his GitHub repo. Video footage was recorded live on HoloLens 2 hardware, and please note that this demo doesn't use simple post correctors. We're entering now our lecture room, where we've previously placed two simple models and post them. Note the demo had post real-time tracking of the HoloLens 2 inside our tracking system, despite all these reflective surfaces. The red dots mount the end effectors for the full body IK solver, which we're gonna manipulate now in real time. We're grabbing the end effector and translating and rotating it to the desired end location. Okay, that looks good. Let's sit down now. We finally grab the head effector, which adjusts the head and upper body pose. This concludes our presentation on Simple in VR and AR. I hope you had a great time. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope you have a fantastic time at CVPR 2021.